My name's Jake Peterson and we're here on site uh, with a, our Model 8 portable sawmill. It has a 13 horsepower uh, motor on it and it's an 8 inch cut machine. So uh, the, the 13 horsepower there cut around 10 cube in the last uh, couple of days, which is roughly around 4,000 to 5,000 board foot. We sharpened the blade around uh, four times in total. And uh, in reality, we were milling around, around 10 hours, um, actual milling time, loading, and some staff training included there. So this is basically a, a manual machine that's been upgraded to our auto um, uh, feature. Now the auto upgrade is basically this guard right here. That's all the, um, the, all the, all the auto upgrade components there. Obviously, it includes uh, you know your lever right there, and your rope, and uh, your control rope. So uh, that's so it's a, it's a manual machine upgraded to auto functions, and we've put a 13 horsepower on this just to show that we can you know swap it out. Um, ideally, if you're spending that kind of money on an auto automated machine, you'd probably look at the um, the 28 horsepower. However, that pull start on that 13 horsepower is fantastic when you're in the bush. So you're not reliant on a battery. But anyway, what, what we're going to do today is we're going to do some quarter sawing out of this big log here. So quarter sawing with a swing blade is, is very easy. And it's kind of the natural way you'd mill a log anyway. Um, quarter sawing is, is, is uh, vertical boards all around the heart. So with a swing blade, you'll, you'll, you'll end up with some rifts on timber, which is, you know, the grain isn't quite um, perpendicular but it's a little bit of a compromise. You'll get good quarter sawn boards vertically above the heart, good quarter sawn uh, boards horizontally beside the heart, and uh, vertical boards under the heart. So what we're gonna do here today is probably take the top off the log. We're gonna cut some uh, uh, back sawn timber, just because it's a couple of recovery cuts, and then we'll get down into the vertical grain timber. So I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that we'll probably go down four inches and do a series of four inch quarter sawn boards. We'll go down six inches and get a, a series of six inch quarter sawn boards. We'll then flip to horizontal. We'll move across horizontally this way, getting our vertical uh, boards horizontal. And then we'll switch back to vertical to get our final quarter sawn board from the bottom. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's about the gist of the quarter sawing. What we'll do right now is we'll, we'll, we'll sharpen the blade, we'll put some fuel in that machine over there, and then we'll, we'll get going. So this is our sharpening kit that comes standard with the, with the sawmill. It's got a diamond uh, uh, blade there. Um, basically you adjust this to suit uh, the tooth. So it just hooks up, you've got your positive here, and we just hook it up to the starter on the actual mill. So I'll just hook this up to there and I just ground it off the guard and that's ready to go. Now I tell I tell customers that it takes about 30 seconds to sharpen this blade and I'm about to prove it.
All right, so I'm just gonna lower this side only, maybe a few millimeters, say it, uh, uh, you know, an eighth of an inch, just so I know that I'm skimming something at least. So I'll wind that down, and I'll just drop it down an eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch at this end is gonna be half that, you know, because I'm not lowering the other end. So we'll wind it back, and we'll do a series of two inch skim cuts all the way across the log. We've done our skim, skim cuts, now I'm going to bring this back so that the blade is exactly in the middle of this log. You'll see that the surface is a lot smoother than it was before because we've done them in small increments all the way across. So I'll wind it over, right in the middle. Now ideally, I'm going to swing this guard up so everyone can see what that blade's doing. So I'll get a spanner for that, 17. Alright, so I've positioned the two as far forward as possible. And I can see by, by, by my eye, I don't even need a ruler or tape measure or anything, I can see that it's half a millimeter gap to that tooth. So now I'll, I'll, I'll rotate that same tooth all the way around to there. And we are, uh, we're half the distance of what it was there. So even though the blade was cutting relatively nice, this is telling me that still the front of the blade is down. I mean, we're talking fractionally down. So to, to adjust that up, I mean, I, I want to bring that tooth up slightly. So if we work, go around, we'll show you the adjustment for that. So, so the adjustment for that is you loosen these two big bolts right here, one, two, so that it can slide up and down the slot. And then you can adjust, you can tighten these two top nuts while loosening the bottom nuts and sandwich them together. That'll raise the whole front of the blade up. So that's the adjustment to bring it up. Now we're so close, I'm not even going to worry about that because we're like 0.2 of a millimeter difference. But if we're like a half a mil difference, well then we better start adjusting. But um, as it is, we're pretty close. So another benefit of this process is now you can actually, I mean, let's go back. That was the horizontal crisscross. When, when, when and pe people talk terminology with swing blades, that's making sure that the blade is running true. You're getting crisscross that way and you're getting crisscross that way. So we're so close, we're going to leave that. So you can also check the lead in. Now the lead in is when this side of the blade over here, the cutting side, is slightly lower than the back side. And I can see that it's adjusted well anyway. One, that we don't have big lines between transitions. And two, you've got about a two millimeter gap as far forward that way over here to the slab. And you've got you know, it, it's touching on, on the actual cutting side. So we know that that lead in is adjusted pretty well. For that adjustment, you've got a bolt that hits this push handle here. You can take or add washers to accommodate that. It's basically, when you swing this over, there's a bolt that stops it, right? So uh, by taking a washer out, it'll go over further, which will give you more lead. If you want less lead, you add more washers, which will stop it earlier. So. Basically, with this one little test, we were able to test for two adjustments. The horizontal crisscross, making sure it's parallel with the beam, and also the lead. And we call that the lead in. So the next adjustment we'll do, it just so happens we're ready for our quarter sawn timber. We're gonna drop it down four inches, ready for the quarter sawn timber, but I'm gonna drop it down another 
four inches so that we can take off a, a, a really deep uh, left hand edge. So we can do the same process for make, making sure that the vertical blade is parallel. So what I'll do is I'll drop it down eight inches, I'll come through, I'll make the cut, turn the saw off in the middle of the log, and we'll do the same adjustment, measuring from the tooth from this side to the, the slab, and measuring from the tooth from this side to the slab. And it's still, it should be to that kind of accuracy. Alright, so again rotate the tooth so it's as far forward as possible and the gap in there is like 0.2 of a millimeter. So we'll rotate that same tooth around and check the other side. Here we go. Now look at that. There is a, a big gap there. So you know that, that's about 2 mil. So uh, we need to adjust that a little bit. So to adjust that we're going to want to bring the other tooth, this tooth over here, that way, about, about a millimeter, so that the gapping is the same here and there. Now to do that, you loosen this big bolt in here, now you loosen it away from this bracket, away from that bracket, and that allows it to slide on the slot. So to bring that tooth that way, we're going to loosen this bolt, and we're going to push that bolt that way, so it's going to actually force the blade to turn around. So I'm going to move that about a millimeter. So. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we open that up. So I'm loosening that big nut. There we go. And we're going to loosen this about a millimeter, because it is a little bit out. Actually cut that eight inch cut pretty well, even though it was that well out of adjustment. In hardwoods, that wouldn't be the case. It would bog down. So, okay, that's locked up, and we'll lock this back up. And again, it needs to be locked towards the powder coated side there. And the reason it's locked that way is so that the bolt can spin in the bush. So, there you go. So, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we've got that. About the same now. Now we've got a millimeter gap there. Okay, rotate that around. And about a millimeter gap there. So